Real quick for you. So, Diddy's trying for bond again, right? So, like, he's trying for bond even though the circuit court hasn't decided if he's going to get bond, right? They haven't decided if he's going to get bond. It might take a while. Again, nobody's in a rush, a rush to decide on an issue about bond in appeal court, right? It's like, bro, you know what I mean? Again, he could submit more bond applications if he has new reasons, but he's a he's appealing the the second bond hearing or the bond um, application, which was with the district judge. I think that was made in front of um, Lamar Carter, if I was wrong, or I may be wrong, but no, actually it was made in front of him, but then he got taken off the case. Give me one second. Oh, shit. Here we go. Let me give you the latest update. So Diddy and his lawyers are trying to go for bail again. Then we're going to talk about his sons for a slight bit. Then we'll get off of the Diddy stuff. We don't got too much. Monday we'll get some more Diddy charges. but Or not charges, but um civil suits. But pff, we know how that's going at this point. Okay, here we go. But effect. Let's see if we can go here. Does this go there? Yes. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, I'm just pulling up on another screen before I show it to y'all. Just give me a second, all right? I got y'all. Don't you worry. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, update on Diddy. Update on Diddy real quick. The latest update is this. This will be on the academy.blog at a point, but there was some documents filed today. By the way, everybody, everybody, chat, I'm going to tell you how much I love you because I know y'all was about to kill me today. Today is Mama Demick's birthday. Mama Demix was born today. Today's my mama's birthday. Um, she kind of ruined my plans. I hope she's not watching. Mom, I hope you're not watching. I was going to, so I bought her Benz a couple years ago. I got her retired. I was going to take her Benz and give her a better car. But then, like, my mom don't drive. Like, my mom, one of those people who, like, scared of the highway. So she don't really drive the car. And also, she's not going to drive her. So she actually told me, though. She says, son. All I want, you know, first of all, somebody got to tell my mom, your son got it. But she, 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 my mom is so humble and in, in, in even suggesting things, what I could do for her birthday. She's like, son, you know, make sure you're good. Make sure you take care of everything, blah, blah. Um, you don't have to do anything too crazy. If anything, just like I'll take a little money for shopping or something. I'm like, all right, we could do that. And she And she told me she wanted to go on a trip, so... I'm going to send her to, well, she's going to pick where, but it's going to be somewhere probably in, like, Europe. Um, I think I'm going to send her. Mom, you better not be watching. And I'll wire her tomorrow, like, thirty or $40,000. Just blow through that. Do your thing. You know what I mean? My mom's cheap, though. But, you know, you got you to gotta hook the mama up. You feel what I'm saying? So it's my mom's birthday today. I talked to her before. <laughs> Yo, I'm talking to my mom while I'm getting liquor for the stream. My mom's like, where are you at? And I'm like, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm getting like orange juice. <laughs> I mean, the whole time I'm in the liquor store, she'll like what I drink. I ain't gonna lie. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to send her. Uh, she has money that's dropping tomorrow and I'm going to get her. Uh, I'm giving her a flight to, or not flight, but like a vacation to like some place for like three weeks or something. And then I'm going to hang out with her. Right? You got to spend some personal time, but. If you wonder what I'm, what I'm doing for my mom's birthday. By the way, my mom turns, how old she turns this year? Actually, I won't tell y'all because it's somebody else talkers. But, yeah, that's what I'm doing for my mom's birthday. Anyway, so uh, that's the significance about the eight, my mom's birthday. But let's get back to the Diddy stuff. So let's bring it back in. Diddy shit. Okay. So uh, here's the thing. Diddy's lawyers, you can imagine, yo, Diddy's got a toothpick in his mouth. Take that, take that. He realized that. They claiming that Christian Combs fucking trannies. I mean, not. I mean, not. I mean, I mean transgenders. I apologize for that. Honestly, Twitch don't ban me. You can't say that word on Twitch. I'm sorry. Um, that's what they're saying about Christian Combs. I don't believe it. And and like Christian Combs got the baddest girl in the world. Like he not into no trans people. Like come on, but like, but that's what I heard 
WAC 100 say. Like, real talk. I didn't make that up. I, I, see, see, now y'all gonna make me feel weird. Yeah, I'm, I did not make that up. I promise you. I promise you. Look. Hey, Scandal Squad. Welcome. Here we go. Watch out who they put. Here we go. Pushing up. Who's this? Up on me. But it's not. Fuck yourself. Like, that's the same shit. Like, when you drop the diss on, like, nothing like that. He's a regular little bitty dude that will piss on himself as soon as the beat start. But see, that live, my phone went crazy. Homies is calling. They like, nigga, them niggas is a lick. Where they at? I'm gonna be getting the call. Yeah, that was like, it wasn't, it wasn't, you think they called Ray J? What is they doing in clubs right now? Ooh. They seem like they living their best life. He been posted like him buying a mansion for his new girlfriend, his girlfriend, matching Teslas. He been like, like showing the public like he living his best life. His young son, his young son. Slow down. He better slow his ass down. But is that because of the uh, interview Ray J did? With, I still ain't watching it. I gotta watch it. I'll wait for all no, of them. No, what it is was see, see what he did. He's stupid, right? Because Ray J been kind of defending his daddy a little bit. But what Ray J said, Ray J said, lately, a whole lot of things been getting cut. He said, taking stuff. He's taking people's hearts, money. He's taking people's asses. Shit's getting cut. That's all he said, right? He said, and everybody's laughing about this baby boy. I don't know why. So by you getting mad about that, are you confirming that that's what he doing? Because he never said that. Uh, he never said, you know what I'm saying? He never put a name on it. He just up there clowning and joking. But I don't know. I guess he thought they was AD. But little dude better chill out, bro. Everybody know right where that crib at. And you real easy. And see, Ray J know. Because, nigga, you fuck with transgenders. Nigga, you know, niggas. We been so that's what wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What? Now, um, I'm going to clear this up with Christian. I don't believe none of this. Whack. I don't believe my man Christian Combs is fucking with no transgenders. And I think that's some blasphemous allegations. Trump back in office. We done with that he, she, they, them, their type of shit. We back on some regular shit. I'm sorry. All that woke shit is done. Okay. All that you could be a man. In the, nah, that's done. Okay. So y'all could, if y'all really into that type of stuff, you could still do it. But we ain't going to like just act like everybody. Because the thing is with, with even Biden and like Kamala, they make it seem like everybody fucking these transgendered individuals. It's not the truth, okay? I don't believe this about Christian, okay? I don't know where Wack heard this from, but I'm gonna clear it up. You're taking people's asses, shit's getting cooked. That's all he said, right? He said, and everybody's laughing about this baby boy. I don't know why. So by you getting mad about that, are you confirming that that's what he doing? Because he never said that. Uh, he never said, you know what I'm saying? He never put a name on it. He just up there clowning and joking. But I don't know. I guess he thought they was AD. But little dude better chill out, bro. Everybody know right where that crib at. And you real easy. And see, Ray J know. Because, nigga, you fuck with transgenders. Nigga, you know, nigga. So that's what you was alluding to? That's what you was alluding to on that live? That's a fact. Which son? The one look like Hey, Ghost, what's his name again? The one that look like him? Ripley. That's Chris Christian. Yeah. And the other one ain't his. We, you know, you want to leave us alone, us that been around. The ones that been around, leave us alone. Cause we had your daddy in that cell going crazy. Okay. Now, I, I don't believe that Christian Combs is fucking with some transgendered individuals or enjoying some bussy. I don't believe it at all. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Okay. Um, how did I even get there? I forgot how I even got to that point. Anyway, the point is this, man. Yo, his family want him out, right? Like, you know, here's the point about the kids. And this is a personal gripe of mine. Yo, his sons, even like Christian Combs. I think Diddy's in a really trash position. I'm going to tell you why. All of his kids looked up to him so much. They adopted the, 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 um, they want to be the showman. None of them want to be the background guy. 
Like, if I had five kids, right? Let me say I had three. If I had three boys, especially boys, right? I would want one to have the personality to say, oh, nah, I got I, I got personality like that. Like, I think I could entertain my generation. All right, good. But that's not all I am. I want one to be like, I'm going to be the person in the background taking care of the business. I want the other person to be like, I'm going to be the strategizer. Because all those things exist. The problem with Diddy's sons is that we aren't seeing value of any of them if they're not exploiting their fame. And that's the problem, right? You need these guys to run companies or to be in the background and kind of use either his money or resources to try to build other things up. But all his sons seem like they are used to only knowing about, hey, our daddy used to be the star, so we got to be the star. How does that hurt or help him? It hurts him because all of them now are doing things that are keeping themselves in the spotlight, maybe for monetary gain down the line, but it's making him look bad in light of the allegations. Let me give you an example. So, for example, Diddy, I don't know if you've looked at his page recently, his son announced that he's taking over his page. Listen to this. Look at this. What's up, y'all? It's King Kong. And right now, I'm taking over my pop's Instagram. We're going to be posting videos by spreading, you know, good energy and taking y'all down memory lane and all the positive things he did. So stay tuned and watch this. Let's go. We love you, pops. Happy birthday. That's one of my problem with the Combs. It appears that things weren't set up. Like, for example, I'm going to give you a good example. Jay-Z, how many kids Jay-Z got right now, right? Probably got like four. How many kids Jay-Z got? I think he got, oh, three. Now, we know Blue Ivy, but but there's two twins, Rumi and Sir. And, and we, we do know about other people's kids. And Listen, we've seen the saga of Bronny James when it comes to, like, you know, um, nepotism here's the point when you have a successful father like diddy someone has to run the empire behind the scenes have you ever even watched i know it's a fake show empire you're gonna have the akeem but then you're gonna have the guy who says nah i just want to run the label that's gonna always have to happen here's the thing about all of his sons all of them seem to be addicted to the thing that he was addicted to most which is attention no one is saying hey let me take combs enterprise and rebrand it to make it something else but also continue to get revenue while dad is in jail all of these kids their only goal is to yo let me get more lit and let me get let me become a star and let me show y'all me no that's the problem Here's the thing. First of all, you're always Diddy's son. Whether you're Justin Christian or even Quincy, you'll never get bigger than him. You need to use, you're a Nepo baby. You got to use what he's created to, if you're trying to make him look good, don't showcase the things that people think are problematic about him. Yo, I'm going to show you how we were really partying. Bro, he's in trouble for parties. You don't get what I'm saying? It's like, Bro, this is the point. If I'm his son and I talk to Daddy Combs on the phone, I said, hey, Pops, let me run Combs Enterprise. I'm going to start partnering with non, like, you know, nonprofit foundational, you know, you know, entities within inner city communities that's supporting women. I'm also going to do things with the brand that's going to make us look good. I'm not going to keep showing off this, oh, we still lit, we partying. That's his brand. And he's, he's indicted for it. That's my problem with the Combs uh, um, family. Like, respectfully to even Christian. Christian, right now isn't the time we need to see you in every club. Somebody says stop shouting. I, I'm sorry, but but like, what's up? I'm, I'm just wondering who who is masterminding this. So so they posted a few things, and it was like, oh, my pops was making music, 
and here's here's the thing about this. And I really don't know what their, their goal is. The kids at this point feel like they're they're the apple that didn't fall to it. Be like yo, the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. All y'all know how to do is party. All y'all know how to do is do what your father did. We need one of y'all to show there is a difference. Now, granted, um, we did see this recently. By the way, Diddy did celebrate his birthday in, well, jail. And all of his kids, so we have Quincy, we have um, Baby Love, um, we have the twins, we have um, Christian, and I believe holding the phone is Justin. Um, and uh, who are we missing? Isn't Chance? I think Chance isn't one of the twins, right? Okay, maybe I'm missing somebody. Anyway, here we go. All right, sing that. Happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday to Daddy. Keep going. Happy birthday to Daddy. Keep going, Happy birthday to Daddy. Now, I'm going to just stop this and say this. And this is respectfully. With all these kids right here, and by the way, again, all y'all are Nepo babies. We need someone to be an adult. And this adult, like, we get it. Y'all support y'all father. But that's always going to, like, maybe a video like this, they post it on the Shade Room. They'll be like, oh, yeah, we're sorry for the kids. You know, well, we don't know the kids to do anything reasonably. Um, you know, it's just the father. Here, here's the problem with this. Someone, if, if y'all are trying to continue some of the legacy, which Diddy's legacy is huge, what y'all really do have to do is somebody has to be in a grown adult and lead. Oh, hey, we're going to show you a different side. Like, I thought it was going to be Quincy. I thought it was going to be him. And this is why, like, I was so surprised when I saw his YouTube video. Quincy. When I saw his YouTube video talking about he was going to vlog, I'm like, all right, bet. You're going to show us the gentle side. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> the fuck? Quincy Combs. I thought he was going to show us the gentle side of of the Combs family. You know what? You know what this nigga dropped a vlog on? Earlier than anticipated. I just got to show y'all this, bro. First of all, this was the... um. Our kids, we need to show the gentler side of us, the one, the, the side of us that's not just partying, getting um, maybe high off drugs or lit or inebriated. We need to show that we are gentle, we are caring, we give back, because what people look at Diddy's family as is like, it's like you look at them as the privilege. You don't look at them as oh, no, they made it from nothing. So when you look at these kids and they're just like, oh, we turning up, I got 5 million followers. Like, you, you don't have any empathy. I, If I'm Diddy, I'm telling these kids, like, yo, bro, we need to garner sympathy and empathy from the people who I've given music to for 30 years. You know how you do that? You show moments of, you know, us being vulnerable, us, you know, caring for people, not us turning up. Now, Earlier than they dropped a um earlier than anticipated. Look at really that. the only way to fully, fully, fully just advance yourself. Now, I gotta be honest with you. First of all, let's be clear. This this vlog got eighteen thousand four days ago. There's nothing you're not getting no money from this, YouTube wise. You're not getting no money from this. You're a combs. What you should be trying to do is to garner public support. If I'm the kids, if, if if like if I'm one of the Diddy's kids, I'm like, we gotta put out the image that people who, you know, whether rightly or wrongly, that have dealt with their dad or just seen the Combs family succeed, they're coming back at us. We are being persecuted. Not looking like y'all are unbothered and turning up. You know how to nice, nice. Okay, uh, I'm trying to connect. We'll just get out. Just gonna probably say, Hey, it's Savannah. Bam Bam's ready. Aw. Hey, you gonna look at it. <laughs>
saddest part about this is that, like, no one is telling these kids, hey, you do know they're working on a, um, they're working on a documentary about your father, about your father being a predator and a sex trafficker. They're going to, this documentary hasn't came out yet. You have 50 working on one. You have all these networks working on one. It's going to drop during his trial. That's how it works. Just like how they try to drop a lot of shit with Tory during or right about his trial. When you are shooting shit and putting out voluntarily videos of you got your shirt off with women and looking like, oh, y'all do live this wild lifestyle that the media and every documentary is going to portray. You're just giving free footage to the people who are going to slay. One of the things that's like, you know, and we're going to get to the court documents of Diddy begging to get out of jail. Your sons don't seem like they're sad. No one seems like they're sad. No one seems like, other than them walking out of court like every single time, no one seems like, Oh, no, we're getting, per like, this seems like y'all are having a blast. Don't let it pass, cause it's such a layup. Yeah. I, listen, I could be wrong in this, but I think that even Christian Combs, bro, you want to go party with your girl, you think you got a baddest girl, nigga, go to a private island or go somewhere where the cameras is not at. You and every party told my, oh, we turning up. It, it. When your dad is making the case in court saying he misses his children, his children needs him. Again, maybe the, court, the court's not going to use this to, like, make their decision. But public opinion, like, did he, you realize that there's not one celebrity other than, like, you know, maybe like a Stevie J or something like that that's came out to co-sign Diddy. Everybody else is staying far away from it. And even the public opinion, I ain't going to lie to you, I feel like even R. Kelly, when R. Kelly was about to go on trial, there were some people like endearing to R. Kelly. Diddy's not even making it look like, okay, yo, maybe there's another side that I'm not doing the fuck shit. Everybody who's looking at this is like, oh, well, your son's just having a blast, right? You know, for successfully went and... See, so <laughs> and helped R. Kelly. What I'm saying is that... What I'm saying is that we're looking at his kids and his kids look like they care more about capitalizing off of the attention that his case is bringing them than them looking sympathetic or at least looking like they're they're being affected that could play into a narrative that could help his release or I see who stands out and why but then sometimes I see some by the pool, on the court. It by the way, th this is an L.A. mansion, which, by the way, so this is an L.A. mansion that got raided. Look at this. Diddy, um, L.A. mansion. They're having a hard time selling it. A lot of people are saying that it's it's overpriced. Let me give you an update on it. They're saying he's struggling to sell it, actually. They're saying the L.A. mansion's a hard sell. Let me tell you why. Um... They're not attracting um, buyers, and it's it, according to TMZ, the reason why is that there's only a few potential buyers who have even walked through the property, and they're saying that, they said one source said a married couple recently looked at it, and the woman was creeped out and, and couldn't wait to leave. One source put it, there's definitely an ick factor because of the allegations, both criminal and civil, and they're saying beyond that, every realtor we've spoken with says Diddy's asking price is ridiculous. They say it's worth it's it's worth nowhere near Diddy's asking for sixty one million. So you know, yeah. That said, uh, the realtor noted that the Menendez murder house in whatever whatever recently sold, but the difference is the murders went down thirty five years ago. This Diddy scandal is fresh. So people are thinking this shit is lathered with baby oil. I said, where could you buy the the um, merch I was wearing when I was showing off the cars? Um, I swear all my merch is like, 
not the academy dot blog the academy dot shop so this is where all the merch is i'm pretty sure it's here so just go to the academy dot shop thank you for that uh donation by the way but the academy dot shop you go here it should be still in style we're, we're switching to um winter clothing so like you could get the ugly christmas sweater again um oh shit full 10 percent off the order wait let me see what was I wearing during that that video? Ooh, yeah, that that might be gone. I'm not gonna lie. What you could do if you care about a particular item, um, do the mystery box. Honestly, the mystery box is gonna have like some of the stuff that's not listed there. Anyway, now chat. Am I am I like wrong in expecting these kids to be like sad constantly? Because I don't know. This vlog just doesn't hit the same because there's an elephant in the room. Your dad's like arrested for like motherfucking sex trafficking charges. Oh. Hey. Whatever. Anyway. So let's get back to what was actually intended. So here we go. Um. What was filed today in court is that please take note that upon declaration of Mark uh, Agnophilio that there's a new memorandum in law um, by defendant Sean Combs with his attorneys that will move the court to, um, you know, be determined by the, the court for an order of release in him on the proposed um, stipulations. Let me see if I can bring those up. Give me one second. Okay, so that was that. Is this number two? I think this is number two right here. Okay, so let's read through this real quick. I don't want to make this long. So Mr. Combs, through his counsel, re renews his motion for release pending trial. This renewed motion is based on significantly updated proposed bail package, new evidences, as well as circumstances Regarding Mr. Colton's ability to prepare for trial while being detained, first, he's proposed an updated bail package that's far more robust. Now, that's, that's, yo, he already offered $50 million in, like, a fucking ankle monitor and no woman to a spot. Like, what more could you do? But let's see how what means more robust. It says, second, the new evidence received in discovery from the government undermines the primary basis on which the government initially sought. Okay, so they finally got some discovery. That's good. It says, and Judge Carter ordered attention. So, so basically, they're saying they didn't have the um, discovery before. Now they got it, and it undermines the order that Judge Carter did, which they've subsequently been appealing since then, right? The evidence makes clear that the government's case is thin. It confirms the defense initial description of the events depicted in March 2016 recording. The video is not evidence of a coerced freak-off, but rather minutes-long glimpse into a complex but decades-long consensual relationship between Mr. Combs and Cassie. Additionally, the new evidence refused the government's proffer at the initial hearing regarding a potential second, second alleged victim. Mm. And the new evidence confirms that the government obstruction and witness tampering allegations at the initial bail hearing lacked a factual basis. Third, Mr. Combs' current conditions of confinement infringes on his constitutional rights to participate in his defense. Given the government amended estimate of amount of discovery in this case, and its unique format of uh, in format including voluminous, uh, voluminous video and photographic evidence, Mr. Combs' release on proposed condition is necessary so he could review all the discovery and prepare for trial. Despite the MDC's best effort to facilitate the defense team's needs, the current arrangements makes trial preparation impossible as evidenced by the recent multi-agent sweep of the facility and resulting lockdown. The Bill Reform Act and the Constitution demands more. Accordingly, Ms. Mr. Combs moves to reopen prior detention decision and request release on the proposed updated bail conditions detailed herein. Let's hear Diddy's updated bail conditions. Okay, the, the, we got to hear the... Okay, the proposed updated uh, conditions of release are sufficient. The defense proposes the following updated bail package, which will... Uh, uh, 
I'm a little I'm a little tipsy. Hold on. Let me get a little non sober. Ah. The defense proposes the the following updated bail package, which will assuage any concerns of danger and obstruction and will ensure Mr. Combs' appearance in court. They're still they're still doing the fifty million in bond. Number one, that fifty million in bond is co-signed by Mr. Combs. His mother and his sister, the mother of his oldest daughter, the mother of his youngest daughter, and his three adult sons. Secured by the equity in his home and his residence, an encumbered property appraised at about $48 million. Further secured by the equity in his mom's home. So $48 million for his home, $2 million for his mom's home. Here's the thing. It's co-signed by... Not only Mr. Combs, his mom, Janice, um, his sister, don't know her name, but the mother of his oldest daughter, which is, you know, obviously not the twins, which is, that's uh, Kim Porter, rest in peace. But the mother of the oldest daughter and the mother of the youngest daughter, which is um, Love Combs, and his three adult sons, Quincy, Christian, Justin. Okay, so, so that's about similar, except he just put some more cosigns on it, but. Who who cares if Christian Combs is gonna co-sign your fucking bond? What's what's the update? Like, here we go. It's now further secured by the equity. Okay, no, no, that's the mom. Full home detention at his residence in Miami or a suitable location in New York. Okay, that's different. He's saying that at first their bail package said he he would stay in Miami, right? But now he's saying he'll stay in a suitable location, which means. If y'all want to have him at a hotel, if y'all want to have him at some place in New York, by the way, the case is originating out of Southern District of New York. So, you know, they might be like, why the fuck we won't give you bail if you want to be in Star Island? First it was an island. It's in, it's in Florida. And it being an island, you could just hop on a yacht or a speedboat and just get into the fucking, you know, Atlantic and then just get on a, a plane somewhere and fucking fly to some other country that has no extradition so we could lose you now he's saying yo if y'all want me in new york i'll be in new york makes sense he he says with gps monitoring by the way he had offered gps monitoring before but you know you could cut that off at any time <laughs> shout to take a the race council will travel to this location for any in-person meeting with mr combs or have council meetings via video huh. all right you know yeah, he can't leave, so that makes sense. Nothing new with that. To the extent Mr. Combs' travel is necessary to attend court or pre-approved medical appointments, the travel will be restricted to the Southern and Eastern District of New York or the Southern District of Florida. They're saying, hey, listen, if you got to go to, you know I mean, his doctor's appointment, bro, please, come on, right? Mr. Combs must pay, and this is the point of it, right? Now, this is important because... Young boy did get out on similar things where young boy was paying for everything, right? So Combs is paying for all or part of the cost of lo location monitoring, which means all the all the federal oversight, the you know local law enforcement that they got to tap in with, the security, the actual devices. Diddy's saying we're not going to put that to the taxpayer. We're down to pay it. Okay. Three, 24-7 um, monitoring by qualified security personnel approved by government and pretrial services. He will no, have no access to telephones. Now, this is going to be a big problem, Chad. If somebody's in their house, it's like Pablo Escobar. You ever watch, anybody watch Narcos? One to chat if you want, watch Narcos. One to chat if you watch Narcos. What you'll know if you watch Narcos is that when Pablo Escobar was able to make his own jail is that um he made his own rules well if you think about house arrest put it like this and i'm gonna say this very lightly young boy was on federal house arrest and i showed up Next question. Exactly. 
So to say that Diddy will not have access to a telephone, but he's in a mansion that costs $50 million. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So we'll have no access to telephones or um, the internet except for calls that will be with counsel to be arranged or by security personnel. They're saying he will restrict all visitors from um, except for counsel um, and a pre-approval list only consists of specific people. Okay. Family visits should be scheduled with pre-trial services. So now they're saying that if family's going to see him, before they were saying family would be allowed to just be with him. Um, they were saying no one but family. But now they're saying family has to tap in with pre-trial services. Okay. Um, security personnel will monitor family visits. Here's the funny thing. Security personnel works for him. How much money they got? Anyway, Mr. Combs should avoid all contact directly or indirectly with any person who is or may be a victim or a witness in this investi investigation or prosecution, so, which means he can't hit up anybody who might be a witness anymore. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me just open this back up. I'm sorry. Accidentally close the chat. Give me a second. I bet. <laughs> All right. Cool. He'll provide consent to provide pretrial services, random access to the residents, so pretrial services could do whatever they want. His passport was surrendered um, to counsel, which will be then provided to pretrial services. Uh, the family members will also surrender their passports. Janice, Chance, Jesse. And Delilah Combs, they'll they'll have they'll they're still trying to sell the plane. Um, they'll submit testing for prohibited substances if required, and it could be used with random frequency. And it may include urine. The wear what? Oh, this is new. I never seen this. The wearing of a sweat patch and a remote alcohol testing. How the hell you remotely test a nigga for alcohol? Crazy shit, huh? And or any form of prohibited substance screen or testing, the defendant must not obstruct, attempt to obstruct, or tamper with the efficiency or accuracy of prohibited substance or uh, substance screening or testing. He must participate in a program or counseling if directed by pretrial services officer, officer, supervising office, all other standard conditions of pretrial, which is the, the, the okay. Mm. So they're quoting some other shit. Mm, okay. All right. Now they're talking about new evidence. Over the past six weeks, the defendant has received approximately 23.5 terabytes of discovery material. The material reveals new information about the case, the evidence, and government's previous bail contentions that was not known to the movement, which is Diddy and his people, at the time of the hearing. The new material demonstrates that the government previously misrepresented the weight of the evidence, and it undermines the government claim that Mr. Combs presents a danger first. The discovery includes redacted that refused the government core sex traffic allegations. Second, this new discovery negates the government claim at the initial detention hearing that there is a potential second victim. Third, ooh, you know what this is said? So they're saying that the government currently in what they have sent on discovery, they got one victim. We know who the victim is. Cassie Ventura. Third, the discovery showed that the government obstruction and witness tampering were entirely misleading. And finally, so which means they're saying Diddy didn't wasn't trying to um, witness tamper. Maybe Diddy was just calling a business associate. So there was a whole thing that Diddy called someone that was going to be on trial 
or being a, be subpoenaed um, like dozens of times. And they're saying, nah, the discovery they gave us actually showed that Diddy was just calling maybe a business associate. Obviously, a judge could determine that, but they're trying to say, judge, determine that. Let's not go by the, the um, what the prosecutor is saying. Okay, cool. And finally, the government failed to disclose to the court information concerning blah, blah, blah testimony that undermines his claim. So somebody is testifying saying Diddy ain't do shit. Okay, it's, it's redacted, but okay. We take each in turn. Communications with blah, blah, which I'm guessing this is this person. Corroborate the defense. As noted, the government allegations of sex trafficking Sex trafficking relate to one woman referred to the indictment as uh, victim one, which is Cassie, with whom Combs shared an 11 year relationship, including the discovered materials. Ooh, this mad redacted shit. <sighs> mad redacted. The first very mention of sex trafficking, unwanted sexual conduct, was involved with victim one was November 2023, five years after the cover, the couple's. 2018 breakup the evidence shows these allegations were mere attempts to obtain financial windfalls from combs in the spring of 2023 victim one cassie revealed to one or more that she needed money to support her small family oh i did he did he's clapping back he's saying cassie was a broke ass and basically she needed the bread and because he wanted to give her the bread, she started claiming our word. Okay. She told others she had started writing a book about her relationship with Combs. In June of 2023, she texted Combs' employee that Mr. Combs should contact his lawyer. To have his lawyer speak with her lawyer, she followed up on this with a text on June 15th. Now we figuring out how Cassie backdoor this thing. Or not backdoor, but this is how Cassie, you know. And by the way, here's the thing. Like, truth be told, this is my opinion right here. This is not. I think Cassie is the victim, but I do think Cassie was broke, right? I think Cassie was down to take the L because she found her new nigga that was going to sail off into the sunset. Diddy was constantly fucking other girls, cheating on her, blah, 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 having her fuck 10 niggas a night or whatever. And while she was cool with it at the time, when she left the relationship with Diddy, she didn't leave with nothing. So she got with a guy who wasn't going to treat her like how Diddy was. So it made her emotionally happy. But then they got into financial problems because he used to work for Diddy and he was a trainer. He's broke. She's broke. So now she's like, what the fuck? So so I kind of do believe that, bro, she kind of got down on down the dumb so money. Doesn't mean she's not a victim, though. I, I want to be clear because I've just seen videos of her being victimized. I'm like, oh, I don't know. If she... Was she broke? Yes. Is she a victim? I don't know. Or I'm leaning towards she was based on videos I see. All right. Okay. So they're saying that um, Cassie hit up, you know, this employee saying Diddy should contact the lawyer. Says she followed up with a text on June 15th. By the way, remember the lawsuit was filed in November. So this is before this is they're detailing how Diddy, uh, how Cassie was trying to get a bread. Same lawyer, her lawyer contacted with one of Mr. Combs lawyer who expecting that she might make an extortion. The man recorded the conversation. Oh, you got to record the extortionist people. You got to record them. OK, so one of Diddy's lawyers recorded Cassie's lawyers. All right. You get interested. During the approximately 80-minute recorded call. <laughs> Got to record him. The lawyer confirmed that victim one, which is Cassie, was writing a tell-all book. And that Diddy. By the way, when did Diddy show up on The Breakfast Club? This is going to be very interesting. Diddy Breakfast Club. This, this was it, right? The, the last one? This was the last one? Oh, he showed up in September. He showed up in September. So he, so all that, oh, I'm giving back the publishing. He knew what was going on. He knew what's going on because Cassie was allegedly shaking him down from, from June. She was doing it from June. Okay. Look, 
The same day her lawyer contacted with him, Mr. Combs' lawyer, who was expected that he might make an extortionate demand and record a conversation. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be played in court. Yo, now, oh, my God, this is going to be so, oh, fuck. This is going to be so interesting. Now, is that is that recorded conversation legal? Could it be played in court? Is it admissible? Because I ain't going to lie. If I'm on a jury and y'all are telling me this guy sex trafficked you, and you never said nothing until you asked him for some millions of dollars and he said no. And now he sex trafficked you. Mm, I don't know. Remember, to this day, we haven't seen the super scene indictment that has more than one victim. The only victim right now is Cassie. All right, let's keep it going. Now, granted, you know, the government is, is squabbling like they're definitely they need more victims. They need 20 more. Right. But some of these people are lying. Some of these people just making up shit. They, they got to have solid victims. Cassie's a solid one, except Diddy's lawyers are playing their first hand. How Cassie a victim? She asked her for, she was cool with everything until she asked us for money four months before. We told her fuck off, and now she's she went to y'all. Okay, good. So it's an 80-minute recorded call. The lawyer says victim one was writing a tell-all. And that Diddy could buy the exclusive right for the book for $30 million, which would ensure it wasn't published. Diddy and his lawyers considered this as, as an extortion attempt and did not pay the money. In fall of 2023, the victim one pursued a different strategy. The ASA, which is the Adult Survivors Act, was superseded, no, suspended the traditional statute of limitation for sexual assault claims which was scheduled to expire on November 2023. In November, the victim one indicated a discussion between her lawyer and Combs for the very first time five years after the relationship ended that she had been sexually abused by Mr. Combs. <gasps> Let's put this in perspective, people. The, according to Diddy's lawyers, Cassie hit them up in June 2023 saying, yo, we need some bread. Me, me and the trainer that I done cheated on you or I left you for, we're broke. The only way I could make money, because niggas don't want to hear me sing, I'm not going to be a star. I'm finna write a tell-all book about me being with you. But I'm going I'm to I'm say a lot of shit. We used to do coke. You used to let me put on a dildo and fuck you in the ass. I'm going to say everything. By the way, I don't know if that happened. I'm just saying, like, that's what she was probably saying. Like, I'm going to say everything. But... If you don't want me to say nothing, I'll say fuck the book. But I do need $30 million because I got a book deal. Give me the 30 mil, no book. Diddy's like, bitch, if you don't get the fuck out of here, then her lawyers come back with some other shit saying, the Adult Survivors Act has opened up the statute of limitations. We could sue you. So we're not going to just say, you set so according to Diddy's lawyers, it was only after they told her no to the book shit, she said, Well, you sexually assaulted me then. Wow. Now we don't know if this is true. Fuck. To be clear, the statute of limitations for non-sexual battery, blah, blah, blah. Um accordingly, the only way the plaintiff could avail herself is by a, a alleged sexual assault. Thus, on November 16, 2023, days before it expired, she filed a civil complaint alleging sex trafficking. Now, chat. Oh, this is going to get interesting. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't think they're going to deal with it. Oh, fuck. By the way, Diddy, your, whoever is your, well, I guess it's Mark Agnophilio. But I got a question that just popped in my mind. It's going to defeat everything you're just saying because you're actually making a good thing, a good case that you're, you're getting extorted. Here's how I'm going to fuck it up. I'll tell you in a second. The case settled quickly without any admission of wrongdoing. That's the problem. Why did you settle? Why did you settle? Again, you didn't. Remember, she filed the lawsuit already. It's one thing if you settled before she filed the lawsuit and nobody ever heard of the lawsuit. You only settled once the lawsuit went public. That's the problem. If he has settled before, uh, whatever. But he only settled once it went public, which kind of like takes away his claim that 
All right, if you're saying she's extorting you, well, the other part of her extortion was saying, I'm going to blast this to the public. After she blasts this to the public, why do you buckle to her extortion? The, part, the, the extortion plot was to say, if you don't want me to blast it to the public, but you settled quickly after she blasted you, that's going to be a problem. Okay. With the release of the civil complaint, the law enforcement, a law enforcement saw an opportunity to build a criminal case. Discovery shows that within days of the criminal case settling, the investigation began. The government recycled um, victims' one allegation, but the case requires her potential testimony, which will be refuted by years of written correspondence or other documentary evidence. Ooh. The alleged second victim is not a victim at all. During the initial bail hearing, the government alluded to a potential second victim, arguing that Mr. Combs' contact with this purported victim were evidence of obstruction. Oh, that... Oh, that gotta be the, the girl. Oh, September... Oh, where are they going? Kalina? Kalina? 